All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Lara Hamway, and I am the director of City of Tucson's Parks and Recreation Department. So I'm gonna be kicking off tonight, but first just to um, orient ourselves with what's going on and what we'll be reviewing with you all. Um, Mayor and Council have given um, a notice of intention to revise rates and fees uh, for Tucson Parks and Recreation, Park Tucson, and Planning and Development Services uh, beginning in fiscal year 2025. And some of those fees are progressing through fiscal year 30. So the city is hosting multiple in-person and two virtual public town hall meetings um, to give the community an opportunity to find out uh, more about the proposed revisions, provide feedback on those um, fee revisions being proposed prior to a final meeting on April 9th, where the intent would be for mayor and council to consider approving those recommended fees. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. If you give me one second, I'm gonna share my screen. It was in front of me two minutes ago. There we go. Okay, I just hit share. And I'm going to put in presentation mode. Okay. Uh, can you confirm if you're seeing it? Good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, as I said, we, um, we're here today to provide you with some information. So I'm the first speaker, like I said, I'm the Director of um, Parks and Recreation. Joining me today as well will be Robin Rain, uh, Deputy Director of DTM and Park Tucson, as well as Lynn uh, Birkenbein, Deputy Director for Planning and Development Services Department. So for the Parks and Recreation Department, we are gonna be proposing a few a fee changes as well as some brand new fees. Uh, the first, change that we're recommending are regarding Ramada fees. Uh, currently right now, what we noticed is Ramada fees are the same regardless of size. And that doesn't really feel like we're being equitable to those. So if you're renting a small, excuse me, a small Ramada, medium, large or extra large, and you're paying the same price, we think it would be better to adjust those fees according to the size and the capacity that those Ramadas can actually um, hold. So as a sample, and um, just so you know, we do have all the fees available on a website. I believe Sierra is gonna be putting that uh, link in the chat. Um, for a small Ramada on a weekday, right now you're paying $30, but we're proposing for you to pay 10. If you're not a city resident, then 12. A medium uh, Ramada rental goes from $30 to $25 um, for residents and $30 for non-residents. Large would be going from $30 to $50 uh, for residents and $60 for non-residents. And an extra large weekday would go from $30 to $75 um, for residents and $90 for non-residents. Um, we're also looking at equity and where we find barriers for, for folks who would like to use a recreation center. And we have made a recommendation to remove the $1 daily admission fee for the neighborhood centers that are listed on the screen. That would be Cherry Ave, El Rio, uh, Fred Archer, Freedom, Marty Birdman, Ormsby, Ori, Quincy Douglas, and Santa Rosa. Um, we're hoping that this will make a difference, especially for youth in the after school um, time that they might not be in a program, but need a safe space to go, um, as well as for users who would like to um, utilize certain assets or amenities that are in a rec center, but find the dollar daily fee as a barrier. Um, we are also looking at our sports light fees. Um, they have not been changed in a very long time and currently are rented $6 for two hours blocks. What we're finding is a lot of user groups don't necessarily need um, a field to be lit for two hour periods of time. And so often this is why you will drive by and see a sports field that's lit up and nobody's on it because they only needed it for the first hour and not the second hour. 
And um, we also know that the cost of us to get the lights on and keep them on and maintain them has increased. And so we are proposing an $8 an hour fee. Um, this aligns us pretty similar to what uh, Pima County um, Natural Resources, Parks and Recreation are also charging. We um, have recognized that we have an opportunity when it comes to pools. We currently do not have any adopted swim team rates. And we know that even though it's been cold here recently, it is not that cold for a swim team from Michigan, a college swim team from Michigan or Wisconsin to consider bringing their athletes here to do some winter training. Um, so we're proposing a $10 per athlete per day rate um, hoping to generate some revenue in the winter months for those teams that are looking for a destination for winter training. And then also recognizing that year round, we have the opportunity to work with local swim teams to provide them um, the ability to rent a lane. So for a short course, um, we would charge $6 per lane for a two hour block. And for a long course, um, it would be $15 per lane for a two hour block. And then also recognizing that we are in the realm of small businesses. And if somebody wanted to do a water aerobics program or a synchronized swimming program, that we could also put a fee out there, $50 an hour for them to rent a pool to run a class. We're also proposing a brand new fee um, that we're calling commercial use of parks fee. And this essentially is also in our efforts to support small business or entrepreneurs. Um, the most common one that you could identify the benefit for would be someone who wants to do a boot camp program in a park where they would be charging the participants in the class to meet at a certain park at a, on a certain day um, for a certain program. We have no official mechanisms right now to run things like that. Um, and this is an advantage for us because it will allow us to expand recreation opportunities across parks um, and hopefully in veins of recreation that we currently can't do ourselves. So if somebody wanted to do this, they could do a daily permit fee of $30. They could do a monthly fee of $400 or they could do a quarterly um, agreement with us, which would be up to $500. And finally, um, tennis fees. Currently, we have three locations, um, Rufkin, which is right here on Broadway and Alvernon, Himmel, and Fort Lowell that have an outside operator that manages the courts and um, uh, reserves or uses, you can Sorry, you can rent a court from them. You can participate in a tournament activity. You can participate in lessons. And those fees really have not been updated in a very long time. So they conducted some market research and comparables to this area and, and, and outside of Tucson and are proposing uh, for adults to pay go from paying $2.50 as a resident for 90 minutes um, to $3.50 as a resident in 2024 to have an additional fee increase in 2026 of $4 for 90 minutes. And then in 2028, $4.50 for 90 minutes. Um, there are uh, obviously more different um, demographics and user groups such as youth, seniors, um, and nighttime fees. But the one thing I wanted to call out um, is that they're also gonna be offering something new, which is called an advanced reservation fee, where you could call um, two days prior to when you actually wanna use the court and pay an additional dollar in order to have um, a confirmed reservation. So that concludes the parks and recreation component of the um, presentation. I'm going to pass it over now, I believe, to Robin. Thank you.
Hi, everybody. My name is Robin Rain. I am the Deputy Director for Transportation Mobility, and Park Tucson is one of our divisions that uh, fits under my area. So tonight we're going to talk about the proposed parking rate adjustments for Park Tucson um, evening weekend flat fee, monthly permits in garages and lots, and on-street commuter and student parking around U of A downtown and 4th Avenue. And I can see on the screen in front of me um, that Amanda has put on the um, presentation. Can everyone see that? I can see it, Robin. Good, thank you. So how we got to our rates was we did a market comparison and we were a lot lower than everyone else. And um, the last time Park Tucson changed, changed any of these was like 2013. I think one surface lot tool and one um, garage changed in 2021. But other than that, we haven't changed things in a long time. So um, Amanda, there you go. So this is online, you can find it online and you can see I already talked about the market comparison where we're a lot lower than everyone else already. Um, this is not gonna really bring us up really to where everyone else is, but it will get us closer. And what it allows us to do is provide better security and maintenance and, and some service improvements to what we're already doing. So you can see the evening weekend flat rate. Currently we're at $3 Sunday through Wednesday at Pennington, um, Centro, Tool, and Triangle Lot, and uh, $5 Thursday through Saturday. So this proposal has us going up a dollar um, July 2024 and another dollar two years from then. So in 2026, the monthly um, permit for the garages and the surface lots, you can see there's a listing of what the current rates are, what we are charging today, what we're proposing, which is essentially a $5 increase on July 1st, 2024. Pennington Street is not getting an, an increase on that day. It's not getting an increase until 2026. But other than that, all the rest of the garages and lots that we control downtown are getting a $5 increase in July and one in 2026. The, the last item that we're contemplating going up is the highest annual permit fee for on-street commuter and student parking around UA downtown and 4th Avenue. This is not what will be charged across the board, but the highest annual permit fee. And you can see that right now we're charging 475 as the highest annual fee and 120 on 4th Avenue for on-street commuter. And those are intended to go up at July this year if approved, and then July of next year also, and then July of 2026. And that's all we have. Um, the next person up I think is Lynn Birkenbein yes. from PSD. All right, we're gonna get a new, yet another PowerPoint up. So hold tight for a second. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. So let's go to the um, second slide, please. So I'm not gonna read this verbatim, but it's not just planning and development services. We're looking at all development review fees. Um, that's what mayor and council asked us to do. So it's um, any department that is um, doing some sort of development review. So that includes three of us. So it's planning and development services, um, Department of Transportation and Mobility, so Robin's department, and also Tucson Fire. Um, the PDSD fees specifically haven't been increased since 2010. We're not really sure about the other departments. We know it's further back than that. Um, the cost of service study that was done in 2022 um, basically said that this department needed to have a 7% increase in order to meet the service um, needs. And so um, in 2022, we, uh, we got 14 additional positions. And then in the year previous, in 2021, we got three additional positions. So that's a total of 17 additional positions with no changes in fees um, and no ch changes in our budget, actually. 
So one thing I wanted to note is this doesn't include um, development impact fees in this fee proposal. So um, what we have done is for the 7% that was recommended, we've split it into two years because we think it's more palatable that way. Um, so the other thing we are contemplating that's not on this slide is the valuation table increase, but I'll talk about that in, a, in another slide. Go ahead. So the fees um, for services for planning and development services include all of these things on the slide. Um, so basically anything involving a permit review. Uh, go ahead, next slide. For DTM, they include right-of-way permitting and staff reviews, small wireless facility fees, annual permits for utilities, annual fees for scooters, and anything other that's related to that. Next slide. For fire, it's a big long list, um, again, relating to what they permit. Many, many different things. It's on the slide. I'm not going to read them all out. So next slide. So let's get into the valuation tables a little bit. Part of our permit fee um, permit fees um, includes valuation tables. Ta valuation tables are recommended to be changed or they change twice a year by the International Code Council. Um, they change in February of every year and also in August. Um, what we, ours have not, have been stagnant essentially, um, for a while. And so this change of evaluation table or using evaluation table does not require mayor and council action, but we're just letting you know that we're um, proposing to do make to get this updated. We're also proposing to make this a more standard approach where every year we will look at the February ICC valuation tables and then bring them in July 1st of every year from there. Okay, next slide. So this is um, an example. Right now we're working off of February, 2020 um, valuation table. We didn't know what was going to happen when the pandemic hit. So we just stopped it there and we haven't really changed it. We have, it's still the same one. So here we are four years later, we're still using that same table. Um, in the meantime, as you all know, construction costs have gone up exponentially and they continue to increase. So. Um, basically, we are proposing to use the February 2024 table for the first adjustment, um, and then we'll be evaluating it each year, um, depending on what the UDC thinks. Those tables are usually released in March, even though they call them the February 2024 table. Um, the example here is from um, August of 2023. Go ahead. So what comes next? I mean, this is for all of us, um, all the departments, is um, we do community outreach, public education, many different forms of meetings um, coming up. And then the public hearing with mayor and council is on April 9th. And we are proposing for um, the development fees that we would propose the implementation to go in July 1st for the first 3.5%. So, um, that's about it. I think that's the last slide, but maybe not. Yeah. It is? OK. So at this time, we can, we have been monitoring the chat. I don't see any questions there. But if anybody has any questions for us that you'd like um, us to answer, we'd be happy to do that. And thank you, Sierra, just put in the chat that there actually is also a place to go on the website to answer and comments as well. Um, hold on. Uh, Lynn, it looks like there's a question regarding your development services fees in the chat. Okay, let's see. Yes, July 1st of this year, for it would be the first 3.5%. And then the following year, we would propose another 3.5% if it's approved by mayor and council. Yeah. 
Any other questions, comments? Okay. If there, I mean, if there's no other questions or comments, um, that concludes the presentation. That's all the information that we had to share. We do have other dates coming up. We have a series of six in-person meetings. They are gonna be at different locations across the city. And then we'll be concluding the public engagement process with a final virtual meeting. So please, if you know of anybody that any of these fees would be impacting, please make sure to reach out. And actually, I just saw Abigail, you raised your hand. I, I don't know if this is a time when we can also just give a question or a comment. Um, so in regards to the fees for the centers, um, I would have maybe a, a thought in regards to maybe if the fee was eliminated for 18 and younger, so that it is a place where it could be a safe space for kids to go to after school, but still maintain the fee for those 19 and older. So um, just to keep it a safe environment for youth and that it's not just a place where lots of people are coming just to spend time um, because maybe they don't have another place to go. And not that I don't want to give a place for those who are maybe unhomed to be, but also to just to try and figure out what the priority is here in eliminating that fee, if it's to make it a safe space for youth. Sure. And I appreciate that feedback. I mean, we, we thought of kids first, but we also thought about seniors who could potentially um, enjoy a center, but I appreciate your concern and comment. We'll definitely will include it in the report. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, looks like there's another, there's a comment in the chat for both PDSD and DTM. So I think, Ina, have you put the material in the chat, the feed tables? I just dropped them in the chat. Okay, so think there was a question about them. So yeah, they're in there. And then the, we don't have the ICC um, proposed thing for, for February, 2024. So that'll be coming out hopefully shortly. Um, and then we can all look at that, but you might wanna look at the August 20, do we have a copy of the August, 2023? We could drop in the chat too for them. And they can look at their projects and kind of do some calculations on their own. Probably the best thing. I just dropped that one in there as well. Thank you so much. Awesome. And these are all really good questions. It kind of helps us to understand what people will be most interested in for their in-person meeting. So I think want to thank everybody for doing that. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, things that they need answered before we sign off? I want to add one more thing with our fees. So we have really been striving to improve and, you know, basically enhance our services, some get out reviews quicker. So every time we create, say, a review lane, it requires additional staff and it costs money. So um, that's, we're trying to just keep up with what you all want to see with the getting the reviews out. Um, with a with a tiny staff, we can't do them as quickly. So that was part of the thought process behind all of this. Great. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to do a final call for any comments or questions before we sign off. I see people are leaving, so I think we are good. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thanks to my fellow City of Tucson staff who helped make all this wonderful, all the behind-the-scenes folks. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Everyone.